So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the worst foods to eat with prediabetes and diabetes. Now, so many of us know the natural culprits, our sugar, our white carbs, a lot of those starches, but you're gonna wanna add these to your list because some of them are a little, holy cow, I didn't realize that had so much carbs in it and so much sugar. So grab your pen and paper and let's take off and let's go. So my name is Dietitian Shelley. I work as a dietitian in private practice. I live in Louisiana. I really focus on working with folks for weight loss, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, PCOS. So you are absolutely in the right place if that includes you. It's really no secret, I follow a low carb lifestyle. I teach that lifestyle in my clinic, I follow really a low net carb lifestyle. We do a little bit of intermittent fasting, but I really have to go over some of these with folks because it's kind of shocking. It's like, huh? Holy cow, I didn't realize that. Now I did do a video in the past on the best foods to eat for prediabetes. So make sure you watch that video after this. And then when we're all done, make sure you download my seven day menu in the description box that will help you meet your weight loss goals and lower that A1C level. Now you can kind of see I have my computer right here. I want to make sure I say everything properly. I always write up a ton of notes and I always feel like when I'm done and I'm editing, I'm like, oh, I forgot that. I forgot that. Well, I have my computer here, so I'm gonna look down and up. Don't hate, it's just how I remember. I can't do the teleprompter thing because my eyes, I can't see. Comment below if you're like me and wear glasses, bifocals, everything. 45 hit me hard and I'm not there yet. I'll be 45 in September. So let's kind of dive in. Now, one of the things I always love to do is kind of give folks a little bit of statistics before we dive in. Diabetes affects so many of us and it's really time that we kind of get out of our head that it's our meanies and our pawpaws. And you know, I'm from Louisiana, so I say pawpaw and mama. Some people say Mimi, Nana, my mom's Nina. We gotta get that out of our head. I am seeing younger and younger folks present to my clinic who have prediabetes, who have elevated blood sugar. We're very scared, we're very nervous, as we should be, and the question is, is I don't wanna get on any medicine, Shelly. Help me out, let's do a good diet. And I'm like, the first thing I do is we cut out the culprits, so you know your sugar, you know your starches, you know, we know candy, we know soda. But do know that diabetes, I wanna give you this statistic, it's pretty alarming, has an estimated 34.2 million people have diabetes in the United States. I don't even know the population of Louisiana, but I'm gonna guess it's not 34.9 million. I'm right next door to Texas. I mean, maybe I don't do geography very well, but think about that many folks. And we usually don't realize we have it until we go to the doctor. So that's kind of the scary part. So that's why we wanna do this now. Protect yourself now. And one of the first foods I always review with people is yogurt. We have got to get rid of the fruit flavored yogurt. It is not at all good for us. It has a ton of sugar. Let me kind of read some stats for you. One of the things that I always love to tell folks is that fruit yogurts often have more sugar than dessert. Some of them have an excess of 20 grams of sugar, which if we want to break it down is almost four teaspoons of sugar. And what you want to switch over to from that fruit flavored yogurt is Greek yogurt. Now folks will say, oh, well, it's so tangy and that's what it's supposed to taste like. Now you can mix a little stevia with it, but here's the thing about Greek yogurt compared to regular yogurt. Greek yogurt has more protein in it. And we really look to increase the protein in our diet because what protein does is that number one, it keeps us full. So we're not reaching all over the place for food and it helps keep our blood sugar stable. So we're not on this constant roller coaster of highs and lows and, oh, Shelly, I'm about to pass out and I'm about to get uh, Greek yogurt yogurt. I love, I'm a big fan of Faye. I'm a big fan of Chubani. Just make sure you look on that label, look at the sugar, get it as low as possible. Dan and Two Goods, another very popular brand that folks will do that have a flavor. If you buy plain, add a little stevia to it. It's wonderful. Get rid of that fruit flavored yogurt. The next one's really hard on <laughs> me because I grew up eating this like every night and I wonder why it took me forever to lose my last 15 pounds after the baby because I was told this was healthy for us and it's sherbet and frozen yogurt. So we're kind of in that same category. Oh, it's fat free, it's fat free. Well, we have to remember when something is fat free, they typically add sugar to it to taste better. Fat tastes good, fat tastes good. There's no question about it. 
sugar tastes good. There's no question about it. But when we pull out one, we usually add something in its place. And unfortunately, that is the truth with sherbet. That is the truth with frozen yogurt. Some of our frozen yogurts and sherbets can have of excess of 10 to 12 teaspoons of sugar. Y'all, that's more than a can of Coke or a can of Sprite or whatever we're drinking now. Probably one of those energy drinks that are just flying all over the place, which I can't stand either. And I don't think I have that on my list, but I would add energy drinks to that. Oof, oof, those are just awful. And this is where we say, well, what do we do instead? So the phase one menu in my clinic that I do is we actually take frozen raspberries and mash them up. You can mash them up with a fork and it makes kind of like a sorbet. You could get like a little food processor, process it down. I actually do this a lot with my kiddos. I'm gonna link below this really cool raspberry ice cream that I do a lot in the summertime and my kids love it. It's only a couple ingredients. You kind of do a little splash of heavy whipping cream, a little splash of stevia or swerve, blend it all together. It is absolutely delicious without all that added sugar to it. Oh, and this one breaks my heart too. It's those baked chips, y'all. I love, so I love chips. I love junk food, you know, and, and so many folks, you know, so many of my colleagues, and I love my colleagues, you know, there's no evil. We're not, you know, I don't want to fight with anybody. I think all that's so silly. Like when people come and make comments on my page and, you know, say things like you're worthless, Ugh, be blessed, boo, be blessed. But baked chips, <laughs> you know, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, they're fat free. It's a great crunchy snack. It's a great country snack with, a lot of carbs in there. You know, one of those bags has about 17 grams of carbs and really nothing else. What I don't want you to do is waste your calories and waste your time on food that really just offers nothing. And baked chips really offer nothing to us. And I get it, we wanna add it to our lunch, you know, because we like a crunch at lunch. We like something delicious. And so my suggestion to folks is we do a couple of things. Is we either take, and I have videos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link them all down. There's um, car balance wraps, there's a, there's a ton of them. There's a ton of those high fiber wraps. You can cut them into triangles, you could put them in the air fryer. There's the egg life wraps, you could do the same thing. I have an upcoming video about that how to do that so just search my channel if you're watching this later and maybe up there I even have made some almond flour crackers there's a brand called fat snacks that's fantastic so we can still get our crunch because one of the big problems with a low carb plan and even when a lot of my folks go carnivore we miss crunch now folks will say well I can do bacon and bacon's crunchy it's just not that same effect I miss crunch I like crunch I like chips and so for me, I found that taking the egg life wraps, cutting me in the triangles, either baking in the oven for about 20 minutes, throwing them in my air fryer for about nine minutes, really gives me that crunchy feel. The next product goes in line with our baked chips and that is pretzels. Pretzels, again, really popular in the 90s and I feel like everything's making a comeback from the 90s. I have a preteen and she thinks everything she's wearing is trending and I go, no boo boo, that was the 90s. 90s food's coming back a lot and in the form of gluten-free pretzels and gluten-free this and glu you know we're kind of doing those things pretzels just don't offer us a lot and i get it it's a beautiful crunch we love it one of my foods that i've seen is the catalina crunch trail mix and they have like it looks like pretzels it's made with pea protein i like it a little bit on the uh, pricier side but if i'm really feeling that crunch or if i'm traveling and i need crunch that's what I go and grab. The next one is tough. This, this one's very, very tough because these kind of places are popping up all over the place. And it's smoothies and smoothie bowls. Well, not really the smoothie bowls anymore. That was really hot and sexy. I would say probably 2010, 2015, and they were stunning. I was like, wow. Like, I wish, I, I wish the food I cook was as beautiful as that. And you know, folks always tell me, oh my gosh, we'll do, you know, food photography. And I'm like, eh, hey, I really wanna be real. Y'all know I'm the realest dietitian on the block. I shop at Walmart, Drug Emporium, Kroger. I, I walk into the fancy food store and it's like I break out in hives and I just see my hard earned money kind of walking away. <laughs> Even if I win the lottery, I still don't think I would shop at those stores because it's just, it's, it's weird. Like I'm hiving out right now thinking about it. But again, I have nothing against those wonderful shops that are opening up. They're small businesses, people need to make their money but they're insanely high calorie. Nothing against the smoothie shops, but they're loaded with sugar. A lot of times what happens is they blend the fruit and there needs to be a liquid to add in there because if you just blended fruit, it would be very sorbet-like, especially if it's frozen or you'd be really thick. You know, you put a straw in there, you wouldn't be able to drink it. So the logical choice is that they usually do some type of juice, probably organic, 
it's probably apple juice because again, very nice flavor. You know, they're not gonna add like, you know, I don't know, like cranberry juice. But some people are gonna say, I love cranberry juice. And I go, okay, I don't have anything against cranberry juice. But the point is, is that that juice really hikes that carb level up. The other thing I want you to think about is that a lot of these pre-made smoothies don't have a lot of fiber in there. So let's kind of go over this. The Naked Strawberry Banana, now these are really sexy. They're, at, they're in the produce section of all your stores. And yes, they're in the Walmart and the Kroger. And people buy them because it's a smoothie. So let me read these stats for you. The Naked Strawberry Banana has 56 grams of carbs and 44 grams of sugar. That is more than a Coke. Oh, it's a little scary. And it kind of equates to one, two, three, three slices of bread, I believe, or maybe actually four, but that is a lot. And you're just drinking it. A lot of times there's not a lot of fiber, so you're not gonna be full. They make you go to the bathroom. I mean, all kind of negative stuff. I know telling folks to make their own smoothies kind of, you know, like, oh, well, Shelly, I don't have a blender. I personally am not a smoothie girl. I, I just feel like they don't fill me up, even if I do them the right way. What I would tell folks to do is you could add, you know, your heavy whip, you could add your fair life milk. You can make one yourself, but you really gotta look at the stevia and look at using the swerve. Now, Smoothie King does have some keto smoothies. I've tried one, they're okay, but you could definitely tell, hey, this is not a smoothie smoothie, this is more of a you know diet style drink but if you're stuck in that pickle and all the kids are at smoothie king and you need something that's what you're going to want to look at and again if you're stuck at the airport you know jamba juice those kind of things are everywhere really look to see hey can you make this without juice help me out i'm low carb help me out here because there's not a lot out there for us and if you've seen something or tried something please comment below because again this is a community i want you to share your thoughts this is another tough one and it's dried fruits because we've been trained all our life that fruit is healthy for us. We had fruit on the table when we got home and everybody added dried fruits to their oatmeal, which was supposedly, you know, the wonder food of the morning. And some dried fruit does have fiber, but remember, we don't eat a lot more of them. We don't eat the serving. Most of the time, the serving is like one or two tablespoons. You know, you eat more than that. Come on. The next one stings and it stings my anti-inflammatory world. And it's honey and a guave nectar. And I get a lot of folks who are like, oh, honey is good for us. It's an anti-inflammatory. The tough thing is that we have to kind of figure out what's going on with our bodies right now. If I'm diabetic or if I have pre-diabetes, I wanna do everything I can to kick that out of my system. I wanna reverse it, right? That should absolutely be our goal. We wanna reverse this. And so I look at everything that we can eliminate that can be replaced with something. We can eliminate honey and replace it with stevia. We can eliminate honey and replace it with allulose. Here's the stats on honey. One tablespoon of honey. 64 calories and 17 grams of sugar. It's unfortunate because I don't want, I know people, you know, they farm bees and, and all that stuff. And again, we're talking about folks with pre-diabetes and diabetes. So, so don't come on, I'm, I'm not hating on honey, but I always have to look at, you, you always tell folks you want me to be real. And YouTube's all about being real and doing these videos is about being real. And this is why I run my clinic. I didn't run my clinic so that I could just be like, you know, hospital dietitian, I ran it so that I could tell you the real thing. And I'm sorry, I know it hurts your feelings, but it's time to say bye-bye to it. To compare glycemic index levels, you know, because the argument is, is that honey's lower on the glycemic scale than sugar. True, 58 to 61. So that's not really that big of a, it's kind of like my daughter. Let me, let me talk about her, love her to pieces. I'm five foot tall. You've, you've realized how short I am. I don't have any shoes on right now. She's five two and she's all excited. It's like, boo, you're only two inches taller than me, but I let her, let her win. I feel like that's kind of the same fight. It's like, you're, you're right there. So again, stevia, allulose, monk fruit, swerve, that's gonna be your replacers. I talk about this poor fruit a lot and I sometimes feel really guilty about it. And it's our final one <laughs> and it's watermelon. Watermelon tastes great. Watermelon is delicious. The serving size of watermelon is a cup. How many of y'all eat a cup of watermelon? Not many. That's the first problem I have with it. In the summertime, you're at a cookout, you're at a barbecue, somebody slices the watermelon. I mean, I've seen folks eat half a watermelon, okay? The problem is, is that, you know, and folks will say, well, the first word of watermelon is water, so it's all water. I mean, I get that talk, but there's no fiber. So when there's no fiber in it, 
it's gonna be really high on that glycemic scale. In fact, watermelon is the highest glycemic fruit. People like to talk about bananas. The problem is with bananas, and it's the same as watermelon, it is a huge fruit. So we eat way too much than what we need to. But I would want you to avoid watermelon more than banana. Now I want you to avoid banana too, but that's just the comparison. That's kind of like the talk, like the things that have happened, you know, in the past. That's why we all confuse, <laughs> you know, it's like, what the, you know, what, what's happened here? I think that's why monkey's like, what, what, what? Watermelon's glycemic index. Let me check out my computer. I want to give it to you right. 72. Now earlier in a video, I think I said 80. Forgive me for that. Just bad choice because we're going to eat way more than necessary. And again, if you could switch to something, switch over to that raspberry. It is the lowest glycemic fruit. It is something that you definitely want to include. So what do you think of that list? I, did I leave something off? Is there something you're questioning? Absolutely leave your comments below. I love to read them. Be sure to scroll in that description box for that free seven day menu that you can download and it will help you with weight loss and improving your blood sugar levels. Hopefully by now I am rebranding and I should have a new website up by now. It's Dietitian Shelly. I have lots more recipes. And gang, be sure to subscribe. Your support means more than you'll ever know. Much love.